here, here's the thing. My, my side is I'm very pro-European, but I'm against the euro. So if I still lived in the United Kingdom, I would have an interesting choice. So if you look at Larry Elliott in The Guardian, Larry has, uh, has said that uh, he thinks he should vote for exit because this might be the existential crisis that blows up the euro. Now, why would you want to blow up the euro? Because that will be terrible, etc., etc. Because the long-run effect of the euro is going to be to drive Western European wages down to Eastern European levels in global competition for export share with the Chinese. That's one interpretation as to where this all goes. And that's going to be fine for the Eastern Europeans coming up. It's going to be great for very efficient exporters in the north. It's going to be absolute disaster for France and parts of Italy, if not all of Italy, and certainly for Greece. Now, if you have a system in which one side's running a surplus and the other side isn't allowed to run a deficit because of the rules, the only thing the other side can do is permanently contract their economies to allow someone else to make money selling BMWs. I don't see that ending well. So perhaps it's better to nip it in the bud when you've got the chance. Now, the thing is with Brexit, I don't think that's what the debate's all about. This is Trumpism. Everybody's got a version of it. Trumpism? Trumpism. Remember Donald Trump? Yeah, right, OK. So well, here's what I mean by Trumpism. For the past 25 years, particularly the center left, has told the bottom 60% of the, of the income distribution in the country the following story. Globalization is good for you. It's awesome. It's really great. And we're going to sign these trade agreements. Don't worry, there'll be compensation. It'll be fine. You'll all end up as computer programmers. It'll be fantastic, right? And by the way, we don't really care because we're all going to move to the middle because that's where the voters are. And they're the people with money. And they're the ones that we really care about. So you get the shift under Schroeder. You get the same thing under Blair to New Labour, whatever. And you make that move. And you basically take the bottom 30% of the income distribution and say, we don't care what happens to you. You're now something to be policed. You're now something to have uh, your behaviors change. We're going to nudge you into better patterns, as the Americans like to say. It's a very paternalist, very patronizing relationship. This is no longer the warm embrace of social democracy, arm in arm with so solidarity with the working classes. They're there to be policed and excluded in their housing estates so that you feel safe in your neighborhoods, so that you can have your private schools. There they have their public schools, which you don't really want to pay taxes for anymore. So once this has evolved over 20 years, you have this revolt not just against Brexit, it's not about the EU, it's about the elites, it's about the 1%. It's about the fact that your parties that were meant to serve your interests have sold you down the river. And if you keep Le Pen, uh, yeah, maybe they're all the same. The the, think how ridiculous this is. Think of the Scottish independence thing, right? So these guys vote to stay in because the entire British establishment links arm in arm and says, don't do it. And you've got to wonder why, because ultimately who's going to get hurt if they do it? People with money. So they're saying, don't do this, right? So, okay, they go, all right, then we won't do it, right? So then this, the SNP, the anti-austerity party, are in there like, ah, well, we didn't win that, but, you know, we're still in power, great, on you go. Okay, so what happens next? Well, if apparently if there's going to be a Brexit vote and to get out, then the Scots are going to vote to get back in. Okay, this is fun, right? So you're going to give up George Osborne, who's an austerity chancellor, for who? Dr. Schauble. So your nice little Scottish welfare state is going to be really well protected by the tender embrace of the Germans. How's that working out for the Greeks? Not really. Not right. Really. People aren't thinking this one through. This is basically a revolt against technocracy. It is a revolt against governance by unrepresented, unelected, undemocratic elites. And having had a government where every single district in your country says no chance, 61% say no chance, and then the result is we're going to do it anyway you're basically proving to people that democracy is irrelevant. So this is global Trumpism. And at the end, it's a no-win scenario. I mean, Well, it's a no-win scenario until basically elites figure out that at the end of the day, as I like to say to my American hedge fund friends, the Hamptons is not a defensible position. The Hamptons are a very rich area on Long Island that lie on low-lying beaches. Very hard to defend a low-lying beach. Eventually, people will come for you. 